Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List. And on today's show, you're in my city. Manchester. It's a place I call home. This ancient and industrious city is now a modern metropolis and is quickly becoming the second city of England. It's full of everything that you could possibly want. From shops, entertainment, history, Manchester's pretty much got it all. But there's a few things that you need to know before actually coming here. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak, obviously I've not really been anywhere in the last three months and it's getting kind of boring. So what one of my fans suggested is for me to show you around my city. Now, currently it's 6.30 on a Sunday morning and everything's shut and there are no people around. So when you come to Manchester, bear in mind that it's not usually this quiet. But anyway, here's your complete guide to what to do when you come and visit my town. I suppose I should start by telling you what's slap bang in the middle. Manchester Town Hall. This grade one listed building is actually free of charge to walk into. Simply go in and admire some of the structures, some of the artwork and the history of one of the oldest administrative centers in England. And it's also quite a nice venue, albeit a little bit under construction at the moment. Right across the street from that is the Manchester Art Gallery. If art is your thing, once again, this is a free of charge place to go into. Behind the art gallery lies the heart of Manchester's Chinese community, Chinatown. And yes, I feel very much at home here. I highly recommend that you stop off at Ho's Bakery for something to eat. In the meantime, just explore the orientalness around that you generally won't see in any other part of the city. Behind Chinatown lies one of the most infamous streets in Manchester. Canal Street, home to the city's gay village. Now, you'll know you're in the gay village because, well, there's rainbows everywhere, and Manchester is the epicenter of the LGBT community in the country. And the Pride Festival is the largest anywhere in Europe. Their nightlife is pretty cool, obviously rather gay. No, seriously, that's what it's actually called. So, let's say that that doesn't interest you. How about you do some shopping? Well, you'll only need to go to one place. Arndale Centre. Situated in the north of the city, the Arndale Centre is massive and you won't struggle to find shops that fit the bill for what you're looking for. However, so guys, I always complain that Manchester City Centre sometimes is far too busy. And I must have walked this street a million times in my life, but I have never seen it like this. I mean, literally, it is dead. This is actually one of the most bustling streets in the city, so if you do come here to Manchester, it won't at all be like this. Across the street from the Arndale Centre, you'll find the Corn Exchange, aka the Triangle, and a giant Selfridges, once again giving you more shopping options. And if that's not enough, look opposite the road and you'll find this place, the Printworks. It's an old Printworks building, as you can imagine. It's a pretty cool nightlife spot, but during the day also you can find lots of restaurants, bars, cinemas, etc. So a cool place to hang out. Right next door, you'll find this glass monstrosity, the National Football Museum. Previously known as the Urbis Building, it's now home to our national pastime. And the museum itself is pretty good, there's lots of cool exhibits to go into and once again it's free of charge. But honestly, the cooler exhibits like the interactive stuff, they actually charge money for that which I think is a little bit of a rip-off. But it's still worth going in nevertheless. In and amongst all the glass houses, the shops and the modern eateries, you might walk across this place, Manchester Cathedral. Yes, a lot of people don't actually know that we have a cathedral slap bang in the middle of the city and admittedly most people walk directly past it. But if you've got a few minutes, honest to God, step inside because you'll find some of the most interesting church-like architecture in the city. And it's actually a cool place to take in a service if you're into that sort of thing, but I highly recommend that even if you're not religious, that you at least walk inside and have a walk around, as it's free of course. So nearby is Manchester Victoria train station, and I highly recommend you go inside. 
Seriously, it's a train station, admittedly, but Manchester Victoria is the oldest of the four train stations, and you can see just what it looks like in Victorian times, with the Victorian architecture, the Victorian brickwork, in and amongst all this modern stuff. It's a weird, eclectic mixture of brickwork and yesteryear. But hop on over the bridge over the train station and you'll come to this, the Manchester Arena. The city's concert venue holding over 22,000 people, it was unfortunately the site of a terrorist bombing not too long ago, where quite a lot of people lost their lives. So when you walk around the arena or the train station, you'll find lots of floral tributes and memorials dedicated to the people who had lost their lives in this tragedy. At this point, you're probably going to be asking me, Nin, I've seen bees everywhere, what's with all the bees? The bee is the emblem of the city of Manchester, and it's indicative of the hard-working and industrious people who helped found this great city. So if you see lots of multicoloured bees, that's basically what it stands for. So, if you go north of that, you'll end up in the Northern Quarter. Now, on eyesight, it looks like a bit of a dump. And if you walk around and have a look at some of the buildings, you might be thinking, why on earth would you recommend that I walk around here? This place is clearly a bit of a ghetto. Yes, it looks like that to the untrained eye, but as soon as you start walking around, you'll notice something different. All the shops are just a little bit quirky. All the street signs are just a little bit quirky. All the shops, bars, restaurants, eateries around here are just a little bit quirky. And the street art, yep, that's quirky too. The Northern Quarter is kind of hipster central, and don't be surprised if this is a trendy hangout for the <clears throat> alternative people. But I highly recommend that you walk around here anyway, especially if you've got nothing to do and you like to explore quirky things. The happiest place in Manchester. Huh, interesting place. On the east side of the city, there really isn't that much to do. The only main thing is Manchester Piccadilly train station. This is now the main train station that services the city, and if you come from any other main city, you'll probably stop off here at Piccadilly. Whilst the train station itself has its own shops and bars, I highly recommend not hanging around here too much especially seeing as though there's much more interesting things to see and do here in this fine city. Piccadilly Gardens A relatively large green space in and amongst all this concrete stuff, so if you need a bit of peace and quiet, some greenery, or some ye old style drinkeries, Piccadilly Gardens is the way to go. Anywhere around Oxford Road Station is classed as South Manchester. South Manchester is famous for quite a lot of things one of which is its famous universities. The University of Manchester is probably one of the biggest in Europe, and there's a whole sprawling campus that you can walk around and hang around with students if you want to. It's kind of cool to walk around, especially on a nice day like today, and the bars and eateries around there are relatively cheap. You know, being students fill and all. This is the GMEX Centre. It used to be Manchester Central train station, but is now converted into a convention space. Currently, as you can see from the signs, it's a makeshift NHS hospital for the coronavirus, so that's a little sad. Across the street from that is the famous Bridgewater Hall. This is my favourite venue for taking in concerts and musical performances, especially this guy, Kenny G. I love this guy seriously, and I've been to see him here twice, and both times it's been amazing. If you're looking for something a bit more traditional, like the theatre or the opera, the Palace Theatre and the Manchester Opera House come highly recommended, and they're just a few streets away from the Bridgewater Hall. If you want to do a bit of celebrity spotting, they usually stay in either one of two hotels. This one, the Midland Hotel, or the Hilton Hotel, which is the tallest building in Manchester. Around there, you might notice this circular building, the Manchester Central Library. Now, it's a library, obviously, and it's free to go into, if you want to. Admittedly, there's not much in the way of interesting stuff to do, but it is free to go inside. You might come across this building, which looks like a railway goods warehouse. And it used to be, but is now known as the Great Western, which is now a complex of cinemas, casinos, shops and bars. 
Now at this point, you're pretty much crossing over into the west side of the city, and specifically to the most historic area of the city of Manchester, Castlefield. This is home to the old Roman settlement of the city of Manchester. Some call it Mamukium, some call it Mancunium. Whichever it is, it's now known as Castlefield. And when you walk around Castlefield, you can actually see remnants of that. Not this place, of course, this is a Peaky Blinders bar. What you'll also see in Castlefield is this. The canal actually runs throughout the length of the city, and on a nice day like today, it's nice to just walk around and walk along the canal. The reason why it's so important is that this was how, in the Industrial Revolution age, Manchester imported and exported its goods. What's interesting about walking down the canals is that you can actually see the history blazed right through the middle of the city. Believe it or not, the River Irwell runs right through the middle of Manchester. And in theory, walking the, along the canals is pretty cool. You get to see a lot of cool stuff. And in theory, if you wanted to, you could walk all the way to Liverpool. So I highly recommend that you spend a good hour or two walking around Castlefield. What's also next to Castlefield is the Museum of Science and Industry. Again, it's free of charge to go into, and they basically explain all the history and what Manchester's famous for, from its textile industrial looms to the steam trains to pretty much anything to do with the city of Manchester, it explains it right here. And there's also a fun play area for the kids, which is pretty awesome. And yes, we also have red telephone boxes around here. Right next to that is the area of spinning fields. This recent development houses a lot of office blocks, a lot of eateries, and a lot of shops. If you walk up the street on Deansgate, you'll come across this place, the John Rylands Library. Now, you'd be forgiven for walking straight past it, but this has been voted one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. And when you walk inside, there's the entrance over there, you'll see why. From the intricate stone ceilings, to the Harry Potter style decorations, it's all very, very ornate, and it absolutely screams history. And I highly recommend that you go in here, mainly because it's free, but also because it's actually a cool place to have a wander around. And that's just the middle of the city of Manchester. There is a couple of other things that I highly recommend that you do if you're coming here, but they involve getting a tram and going outside the city limits. So the first thing that I recommend that you do is visit the Trafford Centre. The largest shopping complex in the north of England, it has every shop that you could possibly imagine, and across the street, a ski slope, just in case you want to go skiing. Also on the west side of Manchester is the most famous football club in all of the free world, Manchester United. That and Manchester City, which is on the opposite side on the east, you'll need a tram to get to. And I'm not going to explore in any great detail because I've made several videos about it here, but suffice to say, if you do want to go to the football, I highly recommend that you do if they're on and also watch my videos to make sure you get the best out of your day at either of these two football clubs. I guarantee you'll have a good time here especially if you decide to come out at night, where the nightlife is pretty damn superb. Speaking of nightlife, if you did want to go party, simply pick up a rock and throw it, and you'll most likely hit a bar, a restaurant, or something like that that will entertain you until the wee hours of the morning. It's hard to recommend just one place, as it's all good. Really. But overall, guys, Manchester is a wonderful city. It's got a lot of things to see and do, and you'll be made welcome by our friendly inhabitants. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to the city of Manchester. It's served by great transport links, four train stations, and an international airport. If you are flying in from the airport, I highly recommend that you catch the train or one of the trams, and that's the easiest way to get into the middle of Manchester. The train is the quickest, 15 minutes. The tram will take you about double that. And if you are driving, I highly recommend that you avoid driving through the middle of Manchester. When you're in the city center, you don't need to use the tram or the trains. You can literally hop on the free of charge buses that will take you around the city. Now, you won't need to use the Metro link, the trams, in and around the city because it's quite easy to walk around. But I do recommend that you take advantage of the free buses. 
So you look for a free bus stop, which looks like this, and you look on the map and it shows you where it's going. Simply walk on and walk off whenever you're ready to get off the bus. You don't need to pay and you don't need to tip the driver. It's the easiest way of getting around the city free of charge. If you do need to use the Metrolink, i.e. to go to the Trafford Centre or any of the football teams, I highly recommend that you jump on at any of the stops, go to one of the ticket machines and highlight which ticket that you need to buy and pay for it on the spot. It'll print out a yellow ticket which you will then use to board the tram. And I highly recommend that you pay for all tickets because they're pretty hot on checking whether or not you've got a valid ticket. The fines are pretty damn steep. If you are looking for a place to stay, I highly recommend staying as close to Piccadilly Station as possible. In particular, the Stay City Apart Hotels, which is literally right on the doorstep of the Manchester Piccadilly Station approach. You can literally be from the airport to your hotel in about 20 to 25 minutes if you stay there. But if you don't want to stay there, there's plenty of hotels around the city that are reasonably priced. The cost to do the attractions? Well, honestly, most of the attractions I talked about in this video are free. The football museum, seeing some of the sights and the street art. If you do want to do something a bit more expensive, like watch the football, obviously that's going to cost you a little bit more money. But in all honesty, unless you're planning to drink your life savings away, Manchester is a reasonably priced city in the grander scheme of things. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, Manchester is a very walkable city, so you don't need to take taxis etc. The whole city centre will probably take you about 30 to 40 minutes to walk around completely, so finding things isn't too difficult. Manchester has a huge problem with homelessness, so during the day they generally don't bother you. But at night, and especially first thing here in the morning, you'll get quite a few that will try and hassle you. Some are even a little aggressive, so bear that in mind if you do visit here or if you do venture out at night. Speaking of nights, Manchester has some great nightlife, but I wouldn't make a habit of lingering on the streets at night. It's a relatively safe city, but there have been instances of violent behaviour. And also, Manchester has done a lot recently to clean up the city. And one of those things is imposing strict bylaws. So even something as menial as dropping litter could earn you a hundred pound fine on the spot. So bear that in mind, try not to misbehave and if you do, do so at your peril. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tour of my city. I know it's not the usual stuff that I usually put out there on YouTube, but if you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below and if you've got any other bucket list ideas, feel free to tweet them at me. If you get enough suggestions, I'll go ahead and do that. So guys, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Manchester is a very vibrant city, full of culture, nightlife, shopping, and anything that you fancy. Just not right now, at half six on a Sunday morning.